lot of people say to me, hey, thanks for the free shipping. Do they know I've added it into the price of the card? So I couldn't wait to do this video until after the year. I'm doing it a little earlier, a couple weeks before the end of the year. But I wanted to get it out there. For all of 2022, I've been sending out polls in the community tab on the SM Postcards YouTube channel. And people have been participating and selecting, voting more of it on these polls on different procedures, different questions that I put out there. I picked out 38 of the highest answers um, on these polls, 38. And I broke them down into four categories, listing, shipping, selling sites, and miscellaneous. Now I would say these are best practices in reselling postcards because it's just not me. This is everybody out there that's participated, and sometimes we have 40, over 60 people participating in these polls. So this is what the practices used by the sellers that watch this channel and participate. So as I go through here, I'm gonna basically read the question, and then what was the highest answer, and give a little information and maybe my opinion on something. But that doesn't mean you, you have to stop doing it. You're not gonna sell postcards. Uh, this is a guide to show you of all the stuff, I'm putting it all in one video, of all the things throughout the year, and maybe something you want to change in 2023. And say, wow, 70% of the people are using this, and I'm not? In 2023, I'm going to start, or I'm going to stop. That's why I want to do the video, just combine everything out there. So let's go through the first question, just to show how it's going to work. I've never done one of the videos with all these in here. The first question was, how do you take photos of your postcards? So when you're listing postcards, you got to have photos. Do you use a camera? Do you use a scanner? What do you do? So I put a poll out there to say, how do you take photos of your postcards? 55% of the participants said they use a duplex scanner. And what a duplex scanner is, it when you put a postcard in it, it basically copies the front and back at the same time, and it puts it into a file. So you can put those photos, the front and back, into eBay. And we'll talk about eBay. It works on Etsy too. But 55% are using a duplex scanner. Now if you're just starting off and all you got is your phone, go ahead and use that until you can build it. But it might be a goal to say, hey, 55% of the people are using a scanner. I want to get one. Now what type? What kind? I get a lot of questions about that. There's two different types out there. The best one is the Epson. Most of the people use the Epson 400 ES or the new ones, the 500s. There's some wireless ones out there for Epson now as well. And they also make a, a portable one that I've done a video on. Now the portable one, I wouldn't get it if you're gonna be doing a lot of postcards. It's just really made for uh, portability, smaller, it's got a battery, stuff like that. But some people have used it to do 15, 20 listings. The bigger ones are your 400 and 500s, and Fujitsu also makes one, and I have the Fujitsu ScanSnap 1500, IX 1500. It works fine. They all kind of do the same thing, except that Fujitsu doesn't give you a little border around the edges of the card. There's no way to do that that I've found. If anybody knows how to do it, let me know, but for years I haven't figured it out. The Epson, you can get those pretty cheap used on eBay. Somebody just the other day found one, I think, for a little, around $100 or so. You take a little risk when you buy a used one, make sure the lens aren't scratched or whatever. And the newer ones can be a little pricey, but they'll pay for themselves in no time. How do you take photos of your postcards? 55% use a scanner. The next practice was, I asked the question, do you cross post your listings? What cross-posting is, say I list a postcard on eBay, and then I list it on Etsy, and then I list it on Hip, then I list it on Bonanza, and then I, list, I have the same card on all these sites. 69% of the sellers said, no, I do not cross-post postcards. Now cross-posting, my opinion on cross-posting, it works for some areas. Some people say it works for them. And they can put the, some people on eBay and then put over on Poshmark. And there's apps, middleware applications that will do that for you. Now, the only problem I have, I don't want the management of it. I don't want to worry about if something sells on Posh, I didn't take it down on eBay. Or the app is supposed to do it and didn't do it. 
you're putting the hands of my store into some middleware or me remembering. I'm not up 24 hours a day watching eBay for everything that sells. I don't want that, so I, I won't do that. Two is I don't trust these apps. I don't trust eBay. I don't trust HIP. Making changes. I have no control of any of that stuff. The only control I have is my listing on one site. Any change on any of those apps, eBay, the middleware, the other sites and stuff, can throw that whole, whole thing off and all of a sudden you got a, you got a mess. Any change anywhere also, you have to go in and make sure it still works. So there's a lot of management stuff up there. I, I, I just, at my point in my life in doing this, I don't want to deal with it. Some people have no problem with it. I'm just saying, me, I, I don't trust. And other sellers, 69% of them that participated said no. I, the only sync that really worked was the hip. And the reason for that was it's been there forever and it was working until eBay made a lot of changes to the postcards and the way they do things and hip didn't keep up with it and it broke the sync. You could sell a, make a change of price on eBay and it's not reflected in hip. You could sell a card on HIP, but eBay didn't know about it automatically anymore. You had to run some file. As soon as my contract was up, I got off of HIP after that broke. And they haven't fixed it yet. So that just goes to show you of the management and time spent. And I wasn't selling that much on HIP to spend that much time. So it, it wasn't worth it. So I got off of HIP. And that was one of the reasons. So cross-posting, do it if you want. Do it at your own risk. Me, I don't recommend it for anything. I don't trust any of these things. And if I have to put my stuff on three to four different sites to sell it, there's over 9 million postcards listed on eBay. That's where they're at. That's where 90% of the postcards that sell are on eBay. So why do I want to put it out on some other sites and get one or two sales a week or a month and spend my time there? So in 2023, I'm pulling back from all sites and I will be 100% eBay. I'm not going to deal with this stuff. I'm just going to focus on eBay. That's where the postcards are. That's where I do over 85% of my sales last year. Why even focus on these, the 1% or 2%? It, it's not worth my time to, to keep up the date on all that. So that's cross-posting. 69% said no. So most sellers do not cross-post postcards. Next one is what type of postcards do you sell most of? I put that out there. I wanted to find out what people are selling not just me sometimes you get caught up in your own little world I put divided back undivided back you know which ones came up the selection linen and chrome I remember five six years ago chrome was like oh I don't want any linens I don't want any chromes now it's more continental they don't want and they're selling the chromes people are looking at the chromes so chromes are coming around to their age I think so linen and chromes 47% of the sellers that participated said they sell the most of them. So if you're not selling linen and chromes, you might be missing out. So in 2023, you might want to look at the look at that and maybe do some experimenting. Me, I I sell a lot of chromes. I sell them every day. That that's basically I'm divided back down the chrome. So divided back, white border, linen, and chrome is where my niche is. That's I would say majority of my sales and my cards that are listed in there. So linen and chrome, that made me reinforce to what I'm doing is what everybody's seeing as well. Next one, when you're listing postcards on eBay, you have a choice to have immediate payment on or immediate payment off. That means when the buyer buys it, they have to pay it right now. Not the layaway plan. I haven't had immediate payment on for years. I let them just shop. I, it doesn't bother me to have one sitting there let them let them go i think bit buffalo said the same thing let them shop postcard people are patient they're looking through the store if you got ten thousand listings up or five thousand or a thousand or five hundred it's going to take a while for some people to look through the cards 59 percent of the sellers that participated said they have immediate payment off so almost 60 percent of the sellers have immediate payment off I, it doesn't bother me. I, I, I haven't had a problem with it. So if you don't have it on, if you have it on, you might want to re-look at that and say, why do I have this on? Let the people shop is my recommendation. 59% of the other sellers have it off. 
also with the return policies. A lot of people say, oh, I don't, I don't accept returns. Well, with eBay, you really don't have a choice. They just say it wasn't described and you're getting it back. You're given a refund or they didn't get it in the mail. Offering free returns. Sellers that participated, 63% said they offer free returns. I go as high as I can. I offer 60-day free returns for any reason, no matter what. They, they get a return with my postcards. Even in a toy store, 60-day returns. I back up everything I sell for any reason. Now, the toys and stuff, those action figures, they have to send all that back. I don't care if i got to pay 20 bucks to get it back. I want you to send it back. You want to know why? 90% of the people won't send it back. And then, then the time runs out. So I give them their choice. I will re give you full refund, shipping, and the price if you send it back to me. Here's the label. I, I get 10% of them back. And I don't have many returns. I think I've only had maybe two or three in the toy store in the last year. Not even that. And post, I, not, hardly at all. I set a gauge about 3% of my sales is going to be returns. And I think I'm at 0.2%. So I offer it. It's out there. If you don't offer returns, at least put it at 30% or 30 days. It shows that you back up your stuff is my recommendation. But you do what you want with your store. But 62% of the sellers here offer free returns. I think you can set it for 30 or 60 days. I can't remember. My shipping, my return policy is 60 days. And it goes. So that's another practice. Again, this is from the sellers. The percentages. I get this question a lot. This next question. Do you remove the prices on the back of postcards like from antique booths, uh, flea markets? They'll write the price in pencil on the back and you see that. And people ask me, I've been taking these off and I'm smudging the card. Or do you, how do you take those off? I don't. It's part of the history of the card. They're not my prices. But I'm not going to go through thousands of cards and erase uh, stuff and then it puts a mark on there and it, spend time doing it. So I put the question out there, and the sellers that participated, 72% said no. So 72% of the sellers do what I do. They don't remove those prices. It doesn't hurt. It's on the back. And I, I don't doctor up the cards. It, it, the history of the card, whatever's like this little mark right here on that card, that's going to stay there. That's part of the card, the history. I, I'm not going to sit there and erase this, this stuff on there. It's not going to bring the value of the card down or up. Uh, 72% said no, they don't take it off. Next question, I get this one a lot too. Do you put the word postcard in your listing? Absolutely. It, it, for me, it does a couple things. One of them is I like doing reports. I can look in my spreadsheet and stuff and just type postcard and sort everything by postcard. Two, I think it does help with the search a little bit. I can't prove all that, um, but I, I think it does help, even though it's in the postcard category. So what did the other sellers on the site say? 99% said yes. So almost 100% of the sellers put the word postcard somewhere in their listing title. Enough said on that one. What percentage of item specifics do you fill out? Another tough question for 2022. They were just hammering us with item specifics. A lot of people don't put them in there. A lot of people do. A lot of people don't think they help. That's why I asked the question. What percentage of item specifics do you fill out? The highest one was 37% said 50 to 100%. So between 50 and 100% of the item specifics where the blue circle, that little circle gets filled out in eBay and the listing, you see that little circle as you put item specifics, it, it starts to close and turn blue. So 37% of the sellers fill out item specifics. Me, I, I do the blue circle. Uh, it's pretty easy with the new listing page I had I just walked on the line I use templates and I just got to click a few things and then the circle closes it's not that hard on there so item specifics I think do help I would put the city and the state in for sure because city and people search by city and state there's saved searches out there that hits these so anything you can put in the title or the item specifics will hit those saved searches and a lot of post color sellers that's how they buy they have searches uh, set up and it will go through now how do you list your postcards do you use a phone or do you use a computer that was another question some and it, it's pretty passionate some of these things are pretty passionate with people when you start talking about using a phone or a computer people will 
jump up and down just to make you do what they do. I, I don't care what people do. They can use a phone or they can use whatever. I type faster on a computer. And so do 75% of the sellers that participated. 75% of the sellers on the site that participated use a computer. I have two screens. So I can double things up, whatever. At one time I had three screens. But I, I, I do, there's a finite amount of space and options that can be put into a phone app. On a computer, it's almost unlimited. Also, you gotta sit there and use one finger and do different things, stuff. Uh, to me, I type better on a large keyboard, two screens, and a mouse. But if you wanna use your phone, it doesn't bother me, but 75% of the people that sell postcards that participated use a computer. When you list and sell your postcards on eBay, do you do auctions or buy it now? I'm strictly buy it now. Auctions to me, I've never done well with those. It's a lot of management. Even though I get free auctions with my store level and stuff like that, they just don't seem. I, I'll do it every once in a while when I go out there and I'll put 400 auctions out there. And I'll space them out. Two cards sell. Then they don't pay for it. It, it. Then I say, okay, I'm not doing this again. Then six months later, I'll do it again. So I guess I forget the pain. But auctions before used to be the big thing. That's how eBay worked. But people nowadays, they tell me, a lot of people, they want it now, is what a lot of sellers tell me. So they, they've gravitated. 92% do more buy it now than they do auctions. Now, eight years ago, seven years ago, that probably was flipped. 92% probably did more auctions than buy it now. But 92% of the people do buy it now. So your postcards on eBay, buy it now. Got a few more in the listing thing, a lot of listings. Next question, do you promote your listings? Do you promote using eBay promoted listings of your postcards? 52% said yes, they promote. Now some people say don't promote, some people say yes promote. But there's nine million postcards out there. And people don't search in your store, they search by the listing, so. But 52% of the people said they do promote. It, it's one of those things here or there, it's whatever you wanna do. Next one is, one of the biggest things is, I don't sell a lot of, I will put them up, but I, it depends on Disney I will, but Continental Postcards. They just haven't come to their own yet. They're newer. Now over in Europe, that's where, you know, six by four started, and they've been over there for a long, long time. But I don't do international cards that often. So Continental Cards, I check the boxes and stuff, just make sure they're not full of Continental. They don't sell as well for me, unless they're Disney, Bermuda, Caribbean, or something special. They, they just don't do as well. So I put the question out there, do you, do you list Continental Postcards? 62% of the sellers said yes. So am I missing something here? Could be. I, I just have so many standard postcards to put up, I, I, it's not, not a high priority for me because of my past history with them. So maybe I need to start putting a pack here and there up. Like I, I, I started a little bit in 22 too, but not a lot. But 62% of the people are selling Continental postcards. So don't shy away from them. It might be something there. Kind of like the Chrome's coming to age. Another passionate thing is, do you research each and every postcard? I don't. I've seen so many postcards, I can look at some of them, know that it's going to be a 4 to $6 card, a 6 to $8 card on there, and I know what price range and what I paid for it, so I'm not really worried what my competition's doing, it's what I need. So I, I would probably say I'm 40% research, 60% not. I, I let a city, a state, certain ones, you kind of say, yeah, that's special. Do I miss some things? Probably, but I still get my money for it. If I, if I, I buy them, that's where I make my money is when I buy them. So I put that question out there. Do you research each and every postcard? 59% said no. So almost 60% of the people do not research every card. Once you get going on it, you'll start seeing cards that you know are just not higher than your minimum what you'll put them up for. What's your favorite postcard to list? Me, it's Chrome's. I love listing Chrome's. I, I, that's from my age part, things I know. I didn't know what it looked like in 
you know, 100 years ago or 90 years, 60 years ago, but I do know what it looked like 30 years ago. Favorite postcard to list is the linen. 29% of the sellers said they liked the list the linen. That's a, another change in the world of postcards for sellers because linens were, they just did not take off because crumbs kind of came in and took over linens and linens kind of died. And a lot of people don't like the linens. They don't want them. The older collectors, the hardcore ones, just don't care for linens. And here we are being a top selection of favorite postcard to list is linens. They are good looking cards, vibrant colors, you know, good card stock and stuff like that, but they just don't catch on as well back then, but they're starting to come of age. So if you're not listing linens, you might want to take a look in 2023. Now we get, I did the inventory part of a couple questions I had here. I put it in with the listings because that's when you put them in your inventory. Do you store your postcards by city and state? A lot of people, when they start out, They'll just have a stack of postcards and then they have another stack and another stack and another stack. Well, I got this under control. I can find it real quick. All of a sudden they get a thousand, two thousand postcards. You're spending 20 minutes looking for a postcard, going through the stack 10, 20 times and you miss it. You keep looking over. So there's, you got, I never tell people how to do their inventory. Everybody's wired differently. Everybody has space issues. Everybody wants to do it. Everybody tries to reinvent the mousetrap doing it. Guys, just get a system and make sure you can scale it. You're going to change your inventory probably two to three times as you grow. Just from experience. I did it three times to the one I got now. Now I'm too big. I'm not going to go through it. There's some changes I would like to do. I'll just live with what I got. I, I've gotten to a point now. It do, it's easy to find, but there are some things I'd like to do a little differently. But I, it would just take me forever to do 37,000 cards. A lot of people start out by sorting by state and city. Perfect example is Hoover Dam. Is it in Arizona? Is it in Nevada? Is it Hoover Dam or Boulder Dam? You look in A for Arizona, M for Nevada, B for Boulder, H for Hoover. How are you thinking that day? So you could spend a lot of time hunting. So I always recommend people not to do that. But if 82% said no, they don't store them by state and city. They learned. But you will change up your inventory method. So just be prepared. And postcards, you can store a lot in a small space. So, and they will accumulate. Just be warned. But 82% do not store it by state and city. It's just not conducive to your time spent looking for a card. Next question is international cards. There's a lot of questions for me about selling international cards. I, I don't do well with them. I, I don't know a lot of the places. There's a lot of researchers. You can use Google Lens to translate some. A lot of people say they do well with them. I kind of shy away from them, unless they're very special ones. Pre-war, military ones, um, stuff like that. Now only international I do gravitate to is Caribbean. Anything Bahamas, uh, Virgin Islands, Guam, stuff like that. Those are ones that I would probably gravitate to the most. So what did the sellers say that participated? 79% said yes, they do sell international. So there is a, there is international cards out there and people do sell them. I, my recommendation, yes, sell them. Sell any postcard. But I, I just, from I got enough domestic ones, the USA seem to do better for me. Another passionate thing is how do you store your postcards? A lot of people jump up and down on this one. I said plastic boxes, whatever. 40% said they put them in a postcard box. And what do I mean by that? It's these boxes here. These white boxes is the postcard boxes. I get these. There's a link in my description for... Um, Bags Unlimited is where I get these, but you can get them from BCW, whatever. There's some that have opening in the front. Some are smaller, some are bigger. Some people use the stair light tubs. Do whatever you want. It, it all works. It's just so you have a system. But I wanted to see if people use boxes or tubs so people have an idea when they're creating their system what to use on there. So 
40 percent it was the top selection the next one was the sterilite tubs on there so boxes or tubs whatever you want to put them in is a good thing as long as they're stored uh, somewhere and they're easy to get to so that was all the practices or best practices and top ones that came out of uh the listing part of the uh, of the the next one is ship what is your handling time for mailing out postcards i did one day two day three day 61 percent said they ship within one day nowadays you almost have to me i'm retired i don't have anything else to do i can go to the post office it's 10 minutes away or i put them in my mailbox so every morning i put them in my mailbox they get picked up if i'm going somewhere and i sold one and i had one I, sometimes i'll bring it over now during december and january during the christmas time i usually put them in the mailbox in the morning and then if i sell a good handful in the afternoon before the post office close i'll run them over to the blue box just to get them into the system so 61 percent of the people are doing it one day if you're shipping out every three days or whatever people they don't like that i can tell you that right up front they they they're used to getting one or two day shipping you might want to look at that in 2023 my recommendation is one day now if you have a job or you have some kind of medical or you just can't do it you're not home you travel a lot different circumstances works whatever but just know that your competitors out there when they buy it they're putting it out the next day do you charge shipping on postcards another passionate thing I do all free shipping. It just makes it easier for me, my accounting. I put a card up for $4.65. I know there's 57 cents in there coming out of that. You can charge or you're not charged. A lot of people say to me, hey, thanks for the free shipping. Do they know I've added it into the price of the card? Now in my toy store, I charge for shipping. It's whatever, say $20 for the action figure, plus you know it's gonna cost you eight bucks priority. It's gonna be $28. I, I don't do free shipping in there, but postcards, it was only 57 cents. I've had it forever. There's no reason for me to change. It just, it does, you know, I'm not worried about refunds and stuff like that. So 61% of the postcard people do charge for ship. Don't be afraid to charge or not. What time of day do you pack and ship postcards? 49% do it in the morning. Yeah, I think so. That's, I, that's what I do. I wake up get a cup of coffee, pack up my postcards, walk them to the mailbox. Do you use a top loader when mailing postcards? No, 70% said no. To me, there is no, I am not gonna put this four or $5 Chrome card into a top loader. Number one, it increases the weight, the thickness, and, and, and it's just a waste. One of these little sleeves is what I, I put it in a brand new two mil Mylar sleeve. You can get them in uh, packages of a hundred on there I, I got them in my store i got three cases of them so I, I try to be competitive price as well but there's no reason to put these types of cards these four to five dollars now if i sell a higher price card yes it'll go in a top loader and those nice ebay things or whatever but every day there, there's no reason it, it's not going to get you any more sales i my feedback is just fine by doing this people say it's perfectly protected for things well packaged now, if I was seeing different things in my feedback, saying, oh, it's packed wrong, it should have been packed better, then I, then I wouldn't change. But you want to be at one ounce for three cards, and it's 57 cents. When mailing postcards, do you put them in a new sleeve? Absolutely. 73% of the sellers do. We'll put them in a new sleeve. I don't send them in the sleeve with my inventory number on it. I, I just have a pet peeve about that. People want to get a card, a card with a new sleeve, put it in their collection. So these things are cheap. Don't worry about those. You know, buy the cards right is my recommendation. So 73% put them in a new sleeve. So your com competition out there is putting them in a new sleeve and you're not. Do you include a thank you card when mailing postcards? I did a video on this and I remember the, some of the people said, they, they, you know, 70% of the sellers here said no, they don't. I, I, there's a big push out there to do QR codes and all this other stuff and business cards. The only time I think I could have used a business card is when I was at the Brimfield Flea Market or the stamp show. People are asking me if I think that's about the only time I would have a card and give it to them. I'm not going to put them in an envelope. When I buy cards and stuff, I get all this garbage in there. I, I don't even look at them. It goes in the garbage. Most sellers do it. But 70% 70, 70 of the sellers that participated in, in this question, this poll, said no. 
Now, does it do more for the seller to make them feel good and not the buyer? You know, write in your name and say thank you on there? It's up to you guys. But I know when I get stuff from Amazon, I get an air pillow, my item, and some little piece of paper. All that goes in the garbage and I get my item. Next question, shipping. Do you use a thermal printer? If, if you're doing a lot of postcards and you're using eBay standard envelope and you don't have a thermal printer, you're missing out. Thermal printers are great if you're doing a lot of stuff, or even if you're not. It, it, it is kind of pricey in some areas, but no ink. The labels go right on the, if you're using the Echo Swift things, they, they just fit right on there. It's print, peel, and stick. I don't have to do the stamp, put my return address, and then my Dymo label on there, or write it on there. 62% of the sellers here said they use a thermal printer. so. Over 60% of the sellers use a thermal printer. And what type of printer? There's Rolo, Zebra, Brother. The highest one was Rolo, 28%. So 28, out of the 62% of the people using it, 28% said they have a Rolo. And that's what I have, I have a Rolo. Now I'm not tied to any technology. A Zebra works fine or whatever. If this Rolo dies tomorrow and I find a nice Zebra on sale, I'm getting that, or I get a Brother, or I get the other one. But I'm not gonna use Inkjet to print my labels and cut them out anymore. Years ago, that was one of the things you had to do. I've had a thermal printer forever, and that was probably the best buy from the scanner that I got for print. Next question, when you do your inventory, do you put a SKU number on there? Do you use a SKU number that you put in a custom label when you do it? So a lot of people will take dividers, and they'll put 50 cards in each one, and then dividers have a SKU number. 67% of them said yes. They use a SKU number. What's the other 30% doing? How do they know where they're at? How many hours do you spend packing and shipping a day, average? I might spend a half hour in the morning. Even on busy days, it's not that often. I can pack cards pretty quick. It's making checking to make sure they're right and stop watching TV while I'm doing it. So basically, the people said one to two hours. So like 35, 40%, most of the people said one to two hours is what they spend on packing and shipping. So I would probably say it's less than that. I didn't give them anything under one hour, so I think they're spending maybe an hour or less packing post. Next question I put out there this year, do you use eBay standard envelope? 86% of the people said yes. When that first came out, there were so many people said, oh, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. And guess what, they fine-tuned it, it's matured. It's one of the best things they've done besides sending offers to buyers that eBay's done. 86% of the people are using eBay standard envelope. And with eBay standard envelope, if the customer says they didn't get it and you refund them, go check this video out on getting your money back. I filed $60 worth of claims this year and I got them all my money back. I refunded the buyers, waited 30 days before 90 days, filled out the claim form, and that's what that video will show you is how to fill out that form. And I got it all approved. I got my money back. So if you're not using eBay standard envelope, there's a, I got, I got a bunch of videos on it and there's stuff on YouTube, go out and check it out. It's better than a stamp and a label and better than first class because you're selling your cards cheaper with the shipping's cheaper so they're, they can buy from you. And also, you can get your money back. First class, you can't. They say it didn't show up. There's no insurance with first class eBay standard envelope there is. So that was the listing and shipping part of the practices, the best practices that the sellers did this year. Remember, this video is just a combination of everything together. Next one is, what sites do you sell postcards on? A lot of people ask me, what other sites can I sell postcards on? And as I said, in 2023, I'm consolidating down to eBay only. That's where all the cards are. That's where I get most of my sales. Basically, a part-time dream seller, I'm retired. I, I don't want to chase all these other sites. I don't want to cross post. I think it's a waste of time on certain categories. So what sites do you sell on? So I asked the question over a period of a couple of weeks, do you sell on Bonanza? Bonanza is that little thing over in the corner that everybody connects to because it does a sync off of eBay and there's hardly any work, but there's hardly any sales. It's dead. And as long as we keep putting stuff like that on these sites, they're going to keep the same. They're, they're not updating it. They're not promoting it or whatever. A lot of people say they like the interface on Bonanza. Well, get out there and promote it, Bonanza. Do something. Be a competitor like Posh as the 
eBay on clothes or Macari. Those are three names that I know there, Etsy. And here's Bonanza sitting over there. No one even knows about it. Half to, three quarters of the people I talk to in Bonanza, that's a TV show. But I put the question out there, do you sell in Bonanza? 92% of the people, the sellers said no. I've never done it, never will. Unless they did, it becomes the top end site. So 92% of the postcard sellers say no. So if you're thinking about going to Bonanza, 92% of the people here are not doing it. So why would you? My recommendation is stay away from it. Do you sell on whatnot? 87% of the sellers here do not. And, eight, and a lot of the people here are part-time sellers. They don't have the inventory. With whatnot, I'm a seller on whatnot, but I've gravitated a little away from it because I don't want to be tied to a schedule. And just to keep up with the auction I was going to do, I was going to have to source about 15,000 to 18,000 cards a year. Now that becomes full time. I liked it. It's fun. It worked well. It does all the back end stuff. But no, I don't sell it that much anymore. I got in, got out. Got my money and got out. 87% of the people don't sell them. Next one, do you sell on HIP postcards? If I did this two years ago, this number would not be this high. 79% of the sellers say no. Two years ago when everything was working fine, I bet you that number would probably be like 40% said no. And 60% said yes. HIP is, when that sink broke, stuff, I used to do well on HIP. Same with Etsy. I used to do well. Some people just aren't buying from there. And their fees went up in different places. And HIP, they, they haven't done anything with their site in years. And they, they just need to update it and get that sync working again. And it, it'll get more people back. Even the people that they offer free months to come back that left, the bigger sellers, they went back in there. Nothing was done. So they're leaving again. Once or three months is up, they're gone. That's how you can get these sites to do some things. Is don't do it until they they really fix it and do you sell on etsy 95 percent of the sellers said no i did well on etsy i made some good money a couple years on etsy but in the last year it just didn't do it so 95 percent of the people 92 percent say no they don't sell on bonanza 87 percent said no they don't sell on whatnot 79 percent said they know they don't sell on hip and 95 percent say they don't sell on etsy so where are they going ebay so why in 2023 I'm 100% eBay. This is one of the things that reinforces that. Everybody in postcards, most of the majority of them are on eBay. That's where you go. And they'll say, well, what, ha what happens if eBay goes away? That's a bridge I'll cross then. I'm not going to worry about that stuff. I, I can't control it. I'm not going to lose sleep over that. But that's why I'll be 100%. Let's close this out with about six miscellaneous ones. It didn't fall in those other categories. I asked people, what type of reseller are you? 65% said part-time. So at least 35% full-time. So most of the people watching this channel and the postcard sellers are part-time. Like me. I'm kind of in between part-time, full-time, I guess, right now. But I'm looking to cut my hours down a little bit next year. Highest postcard sold. What's the highest postcard sold? I, I, I threw this in here because that's important to people. Most of the people, their highest postcard they ever sold was between $25 and $50. If you see a $25 card out there or a $30 card, you know you're in the majority of what people say is their high card. Also, I wanted to ask, this is something that you could not reach if you sold postcards and used a stamp and a label. Is Are you top rated? Because you never had tracking. Now, with eBay standard envelope, I was able to get top and hold top-rated seller. It, that was one of the bigger changer, changers. Does it give you that much in discounts? No. But it's just another thing to say, hey, I'm top-rated on there. A badge of honor, I guess. 72% now say that they're top-rated. If I would have asked that question before eBay standard envelope, it would, nobody would be. Hardly. Only, only people who would be top-rated are the ones that were shipping first class with tracking. Everybody else using a stamp and a label would be a no. So 72%, that's what eBay Standard Envelope has done, is gotten 72% of the top rated uh, postcard sellers the top rated status. Where do you source your postcards? Antique malls, auctions, guess where the top place to source postcards? eBay. 42% of the participants said that they source most of their postcards off of eBay. Now, I've, I've taken a different swing on it going into 20, end of 2022 
the last part of 2022 and going into 2023 is I want cards that have not been online. I want private collections. I want stuff I find out in the wild. And what I mean by the wild, out away from eBay, not online. Things that never hit online. Uh, different auction, higher end cards. I'm paying a little bit more for cards. Instead of 25 cents, I'm paying 50 cents to a dollar, two dollars a card, and stuff like that. But most people will source their postcards off of eBay. Do you send offers to buyers? One of the best things eBay ever did, along with eBay Standard Envelope, do you send offers? I send offers all day long. 10%, boom, gone. Most of mine are set up automatically to send 10%. I don't want to deal with it. Just make it, I'm going to send it to them anyway, so I might as well just let eBay send it. Do you send offers to buyers? Yes. 91% of the sellers send offers to buyers. Then I asked the question, do you only sell postcards? I sell action figures and some a few other things, but I'm really bringing that down, scaling that down over the last year. 80% of the sellers said no. Do you source high-end postcards? And what I mean by that is anything basically over $20. Do you look for those specifically and then not the average cards? Basically how it was taken is, do you find those as well when you sell high-end cards? 62% said yes. So if you're out there looking for your average Chrome card to fill your store up and you see an RPPC of some disaster, would you pick that up? Absolutely. So I'll, I guess I answered my own, que my own question with that. So 62% said yes. Always find those higher ones. Those are the neat ones that you get every once in a while. But that was 38 different questions that I put out in 2022. The best ones I picked. There were some other ones out there that didn't really have anything to do with this. It was just off the wall stuff. But those are things that you can start thinking about in 2023 that you want to change. Or if you're feeling comfortable with what you got, just keep doing what you're doing if you're doing well. And you don't want to change or whatever. But that's what those polls will do. They come out every Saturday morning around 8 or 9 o'clock and they're just quick questions. You click on it and then we get to see what people are really doing. And I, I did make some changes to my business in 2022 from these polls on there and stuff like that. And one of the big ones is moving off these other sites and moving to eBay. I mean, you're talking 42% of the people source off of eBay and stuff and they don't sell on these other sites. Why am I doing it? So I made some changes. Five years from now, I might make a change and go back and do something. But check out those polls. If you got any question about that, put it in the comments. Me or someone else will answer it or try to on there and stuff like that. YouTube's going to give you a video here that they think you want to watch. All right, here it is. You have a good day. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.